Find the critical points of the function f of x equals x cubed minus 3x squared minus 9x plus 5. Critical points exist when f prime of x equals 0. So what I have to do is I have to find out what f prime of x is and then set it equal to 0. So f prime of x is going to be power rule 3x squared, power rule minus 6x, power rule minus 9. Set that equal to 0. Factor out a 3, you get x minus 2x, I'm sorry, x squared, whew, minus 2x minus 3. Factor that out, and you get two numbers that add up to negative 2 and multiply out to negative 3 are going to be x minus 3, x plus 1. Okay, now according to the zero product property, the 2x values that will make that equal to zero will exist at 3 and at negative 1. This 3 means nothing. There's no x attached. So my answer is A, 3 and negative 1. Fun stuff. Find the critical points of the function f of x equals 3x squared minus 2x plus 1 all over x plus 1. Well, usually when we're finding the critical points, we have some type of uh, polynomial. Well, now we have a rational function, which means not only do we care when f prime of x equals 0, but we also care about when the original function is undefined. So we'll deal with that when we have to deal with that. It's kind of obvious. But right now, we need to find where f prime of x equals 0. Now, f prime of x requires our good friend, the quotient rule. That's right, u prime v minus v prime u all over v squared. So let's find the heavy duty stuff. Uh, u prime is going to be power rule, power rule, power rule. It's the derivative of the numerator. So 3x, 6x rather, minus 2. V prime is going to be the derivative of the denominator, so just regular 1. And then V squared is going to be X plus 1 squared. So let's put it all together. U prime V is going to be 6X minus 2. V, which is going to be X plus 1, so there's going to be foiling there. Minus V prime, which is 1, that's nice. U, which is 3X squared minus 2X plus 1. And that's going to be all over uh, x plus 1 squared. I forgot to put the squared there. Silly me. Hmm. All right. Set it equal to 0. We've got FOIL. So 6x squared uh, plus 6x, right? Negative 2x, negative 2. Distribute the negative 1 minus 3x squared positive 2x, negative 1. And that's going to all over be x plus 1 squared. Now let's multiply both sides by x plus 1 squared. And you'll realize, wait a minute, that just makes it go away. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the point. Because we don't need a denominator where we're finding zeros. So that's nice. Uh, now let's combine like terms up here. 6x squared combines with negative 3x squared to make regular 3x squared like so. 6x minus 2x, ooh, plus 2x goes back to 6x. And then negative 2 and negative 1, negative 3. Let's rip out a 3. And here's going to be an issue. You can't factor that, which means we're going to have to use our old friend, the quadratic formula, x equals negative b plus or minus square root, b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. a is 1, b is 2, c is negative 1. So putting all that together, you get negative 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is going to be 2 squared, minus 4 times 1 times negative 1, all over 2 times 1. And so we got that's negative 2 plus or minus 4. Uh, that'll be plus 4, so the square root of 8, all over 2. 
8 is 2 times 4, so I can rip out a 2 and keep it 2 all over 2. And so when I clean this up and put it up here, all these 2's simplify to a 1, like that. And so we have negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 2. So those are two of my critical points. Now, what we can't forget is a third critical point is going to be what makes this undefined. Negative one makes this undefined. So negative one is my other option. So kind of a very messy problem for a critical point problem, but you're going to run into messy problems and we did it. We did it just fine. Find the critical points of the function f of x equals ln of x minus x. So what we have is critical points. Critical points exist when f prime of x equals 0. So what I have to do is take the derivative and set it equal to 0 and solve for x. So f prime of x is going to equal the derivative of ln of x, which is 1 over x, uh, minus x. The derivative of negative x is minus 1. So let's set that equal to 0. 1 over x minus 1, let's add 1, add 1, 1 equals 1 over x. While I'm at it, why don't I just multiply both sides by x, right? And I get x equals 1. Now you might be thinking, doesn't critical points also exist where this guy is undefined? Shouldn't we include 0? No, and here's why. Because ln of x doesn't exist at 0. You can't take the ln at 0. So our only guy is going to be 1. So kind of, you have to be a little careful with this. There's a little bit of trickery behind it. But if you kind of don't remember about the trickery and just do the problem as is, you'll be all right. Is point A a global maximum, a local maximum, both or neither? By definition, a global maximum is absolutely the very top of a graph. There's nothing greater than it. There's no y value larger than it. And A is definitely going to be a global maximum. Okay, this graph seems to be going down to negative infinity on both ends. The end behavior seems to be at negative infinity. So we could say that this is a global maximum for sure. Now, fun fact, anything that's a global maximum is also a local maximum. So it's both. Now, there's only one global maximum, and it's A. Technically, you're a local maximum right here, but I'm not asking about that thing right there. I'm asking about A, and A is considered both a global max and a local max. By the way, global is also called absolute maximum, uh, just in case you were dying to know. Now you know. Identify the critical points of g of x. Well, critical points of a function exist when the derivative is equal to 0. Now, derivative is equal to 0 is just fancy talk for saying that the slope is horizontal. So at any points, we have an instantaneous rate of change uh, be a, a flat line, we're going to have a critical point. So that happens here at b. B has an instantaneous rate of change that is a flat line. And down here at D, you get the same exact thing. Now, critical points indicate where a, a graph goes from increasing to decreasing. So it would make sense that a local maximum or a local minimum would give us our critical points. And that's what B and D give us in this case. So those are my critical points right there.